Veterans Day actually began as Armistice Day, which marked the treaty signed on November 11th by the Allies in Germany to end World War I. On November 11th, 1948, Raymond Weeks, a veteran himself, began honoring his peers with picnics and parades. A few years later, Congress changed Armistice Day to Veterans Day. While it is always important to remember those service members who died in war, that is the specific purpose of Memorial Day. Veterans Day is a day set aside to thank and honor all those who have served in the military in wartime or peacetime. We are very grateful to those who serve our country. I had the pleasure of serving the city with Mayor Denny Shortle, who was also a retired Marine Brigadier General. You do not have to be around Denny for long to understand what his service meant to him. Last year, one of our local Boy Scout troops visited the Pensacola Naval Air Station. Dunwoody resident and retired Navy Captain Wayne Radloff arranged for the troop to meet his son, Major Andrew Radloff. Major Radloff is a flight instructor at Pensacola. Before touring the flight line and other facilities, the troop joined the Major in a pilot briefing room and learned about the intense work and training involved in preparing to serve. They also learned about the many sacrifices that all our military make to serve us. After visiting with the Major, the boys' understanding of the military quickly shifted from a movie and video game perspective to understanding what is required of those who serve us. My last example is a young man who grew up in Dunwoody and whose family still lives here. Thomas Weber served four years in the Marines and has been serving in the Army Reserves. There is a picture in his parents' home of his wife, Dory, holding their baby, Samantha, who was almost a year old, as Thomas deployed to Iraq. You can see the tears in Dory's eyes. Thomas has also deployed to Afghanistan and just returned from a year in Bahrain. He returned this time to Samantha, who is now 11, and her siblings Jackson, Caroline, and Ella. On behalf of a grateful city of Dunwoody, I want to thank Denny, the Radloffs, and Thomas, along with all the others who have their own stories. Thank you to all of our veterans and to every active duty member of the military. Thank you for defending and advancing our freedoms, our liberty, our way of life. I would like to recognize all those among us who have served or are currently serving. We are humbled by your great sacrifices and the sacrifices of your family members. Thank you as words simply spoken is truly insufficient to express gratitude to all of you. We also remember that honoring those who served isn't just about what we say here today. It's about how we honor our veterans every day. It's remaining committed to supporting them and their families in every way that we possibly can. It's about serving them as well as they've served and continue to serve our nation. As President Kennedy said, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter the words, but to perform the acts. We must work to preserve the freedoms that they have fought to protect. We must vote, speak out against wrongs, and participate in our community. We must raise our children to be engaged civically. Most of all, we honor our veterans by living a life well lived. In closing, I would like to share this from President Ronald Reagan. We remember those who were called upon to give all a person can give. And we remember those who were prepared to make that sacrifice if it were demanded of them in the line of duty, though it never was. Most of all, we remember the devotion and gallantry with, with which all of them ennobled their nation as they became champions of a noble cause. Thank you, and may God bless and keep our fallen, our veterans, and active military in the United States of America. Hello, my name is Major Mike Carlson with the Dunwoody Police Department, and I'm an active member of the Georgia National Guard. I'd like to wish everyone a happy Veterans Day. And at this time, if you're able to stand, I would like for you to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and once again, happy Veterans Day.
Each veteran is a unique individual with a unique story to tell. Tim O'Brien wrote a remarkable book entitled The Things They Carried. There, O'Brien captures the distinct nature of the soldier's experience through the lens of the things they carried with them. And he wrote in this poignant reflection, First Lieutenant Jimmy Cross carried letters from a girl named Martha a junior at Mount Sebastian College in New Jersey. They carried the standard fatigue jackets and trousers. Very few carried underwear. As first lieutenant and platoon leader, he carried a compass, maps, code books, binoculars, and a 45 caliber pistol that weighed 2.9 pounds fully loaded. As a medic, Rat Kylie carried a canvas satchel filled with morphine and plasma and malaria tablets and surgical tape and comic books and all the things a medic must carry, including M&Ms for especially bad wounds for a total of nearly 18 pounds. And as a big man and a machine gunner, Henry Dobbins carried the M60, which weighed 23 pounds unloaded but which was almost always loaded. And what they carried varied by mission. The things they carried were determined to some extent by superstition. Often they carried each other, the wounded or the weak. For the most part, they carried themselves with poise, a kind of dignity. They carried all the emotional baggage of men who might die. They carried shameful memories. My colleague, uh, Rabbi Bonnie Capel, who served as an army chaplain, said, one, things, 
that veterans have in common is that no matter where or when they served, they schlepped. That's a Yiddish word meaning for carrying and dragging things around. And she said, I often think that the motto of the U.S. Army should be, we schlep. So less than 1% of the U.S. population actually serves in the military. Few understand the terror and the triumph, the boredom and the exhilaration of military life. It seems counterintuitive, but many veterans will tell you that those times in service, when their very lives were threatened, were the best days of their lives. And yet for too many, today's returning warriors carry unseen wounds, painful memories, and post-traumatic stress. Our democratic way of life carries with it an awesome sense of responsibility. So on this day, when we pay tribute to those who serve to defend these United States of America, we pray that our country may continue to be a beacon around the world to all those who yearn for freedom and justice for all. Divine Spirit, bless all the inhabitants of our United States of America with an understanding of your presence. Protect our republic and grant it prosperity. Shield all those serving in our country's uniformed services from danger, distress, and fear. Guide them as they work together to protect the health and safety of our nation and to bring hope and security to those whom others have forgotten. Give them the strength to justly use their willing hands, hearts, and minds to improve the communities in which they serve everywhere throughout the world, comfort and bless their family members and loved ones who remain our neighbors and friends here at home. Console all people who care for those who bear the wounds of war and for those who mourn those who paid the ultimate sacrifice. May the goodness of our expressions and deeds awaken the world and be accepted by the transcendent source of all wisdom and understanding. May we all be granted a long life, a life rich and honest, a life of good and a life of peace. And let us say, Amen. We now pay tribute to those who have currently served or have served in defense of our nation by playing the military service songs. If you currently serve in one of the military services, have previously served, or are a veteran, or are a family member of someone who served, we are very grateful to each of you. I will announce each military branch before we play each song. We begin with the United States Maritime Service. United States Coast Guard. <laughs> United States Air Force.
United States Navy. The United States Marine Corps. the United States Army. Thank you for your service, your dedication, and your sacrifice. Hello, Dunwoody. Today is Veterans Day, a day that we remember our men and women in the armed forces who bravely served our country. We ask that you now please take a moment of silence so that we may honor both past and present, men and women in uniform. Thank you. I want to thank the VFW, particularly Wayne Radloff, and Dunwoody Parks and Recreation and Communication staff for making this ceremony possible. We appreciate the invocation by Rabbi Mark Zimmerman from Congregation Beth Shalom. A special thanks to Callenwald for the music today, and I want to particularly thank you all for joining us in this strange time. May we all be able to gather next Veterans Day at Brook Run. Thank you. <laughs>